Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Curl Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode, I hope to do quite a few launches, a couple to Eve, a bunch to Jewel, and then of course take care of all the Drez stuff, but that's only after an asteroid thing, and uh, this is the transfer of the Explorer X back from Eve to Kerbin. And so, yeah, a, lot's go a lot is going to be going on. The Curb Alarm Clock is going to get quite full here, and uh, this is part three of the Great Deployment, and we will uh, see that proceed quite splendidly, I think. But uh, first things first, let me go to the contract screen. And one thing I want to point out is that I picked up uh, Perform Atmospheric Scans on EVE contract, because uh, it might be interesting to do this. So we have to take pressure readings, so barometer readings, uh, above 21 kilometers at these two locations and below 22 at this location. Uh, there's a lot of science and a lot of funding involved, so that's good, but it is tricky to get these sorts of readings at EVE. You could drop probes at each of these locations, but I've come up with uh, something a little bit more interesting. We've also got this Explore Eve contract, remember, but that's taken care of by a probe that we've already sent out. Uh, though we'll have to do a maneuver for that probe momentarily in about three hours. So, uh, other things I plan to take care of. I'm not taking care of this Minmus one yet. I do plan to send this orbital station to Joule, and it'll actually be a Joule Oasis, similar to our Drez Oasis. And so, um, it'll fulfill this... Uh, uh, pretty easily. And then I'm not going to send out the Class D asteroid ejection system, if you will, yet. We'll wait for an asteroid to come a little bit closer to Kerbin. But we will be sending missions to explore Bop and explore Paul, and of course explore Jewel. That'll just go on with the Jewel orbital station. So, uh, this, 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 uh, that, and that are what we're trying to take care of. So let's get to it. Our first launch will be of the Strider Light, and it is carrying the EVE Science drones. Actually, there are two of them. And so this is the interesting solution I had to getting those barometer readings that we saw. And so these science drones have a barometer and an antenna there, and of course, wings. And so they're actual drones, and a sort of a, um ulterior motive I have for doing it this way is because I want to examine the aerodynamics of EVE and so I want to see how EVE aerodynamics works and this is the way I've developed to do that and so they'll swoop in they'll take the readings and if they can swoop back out that'd be great if they can't uh, we'll probably have to send an extra one for one of the locations uh, they do have a fair amount of Delta V though I don't think it's showing up here very well uh, they have one of the Rockamax 48 7S's on their tails you can see a reaction wheel there, placed there to get the balance right. Uh, the goal of the balance was to make sure that as they deplete fuel, the center mass doesn't move at all. So actually, the reaction wheel plus the Rockmax 48.7S's um, are exactly balanced with the nose cone, battery, and probe. So that is the idea there. Oh, and the, the surfaces end up uh, basically cancelling each other out. Now, originally I wanted to send one of these on a Strider Light, and so we would uh, have a cheaper launch instead of sending two on this one. But it turned out that the wings were a little bit too broad, as you can see the diameter uh, would outstrip the size of the Strider Light, and in fact it causes this fairing to be a little bit wider than usual as well. But, uh, yeah, so we are going with, uh, sorry, uh, I was hoping to use the Strider SL, right, the Super Legera. And uh, we had to go with the Strider Light because of the size of the wings. Okay, so that about says it all. So let's take this out to the launch pad and see how it goes. Uh, they are very light. So, I mean, the payload was meant for a lighter rocket. So no problem getting these stages to orbit and after that uh, plenty of Delta V to reach Eve. Okay here we go SS on, throttle up, uh, we don't need target here we will use Smart ASS so first launch of the day uh, you can see Kerbin to Eve 17 minutes left for that transfer window we got three hours until we have to deal with that maneuver for the Eve lander too and we'll probably have a similar maneuver for this rocket as well. Okay 
Uh, here we go. Strider lights, looking good. So an important component in how I'm going to manage all these missions is that I have to create an alarm uh, for them. So I'm going to create an alarm for the transfer for this one before I leave it. And at every point I have to make sure that there's alarm for everything otherwise I might forget a mission. And that would be bad. So, yep, always have to add an alarm for everything. You might say that I can uh, just have it automatically add the maneuver alarm, but what if I don't create a maneuver for it? You know, have to remember to do the SOI change alarms and all that too. Or just uh, at the end of this launch, I might not have a maneuver for it if I don't uh, pay attention to that. So I think mainly phase 3 will be the EVE stuff, and then phase 4 will be the Jewel mission launches and getting them transferred. Okay, booster set. Alright, make sure they don't hit each other. Okay, looks pretty good. We will uh, pay attention to make sure that stage recovery gets a hold of those. We have plenty of uh, Delta V for orbit. We'll probably hang on to the stage in order to give us our initial boost to EVE. Now I don't necessarily want to air brake at EVE because the drones are, you know, potentially delicate stuff. So probably I'd want to actually manually get into orbit around EVE. So having extra Delta V is probably going to be very helpful. Okay, let me cut the... Here, we're already high enough on apoapsis. Let's drop the fairings. Okay. Our only solar panels are on the on the little probes on the drones. Let's make sure one one set is facing the sun because obviously they don't turn. Bit of a risk there. Got a long burn for orbit because we had a very steep ascent, but here we go. Okay, we're past apoapsis and coming to the close of this burn. Alright, that'll do. Okay, so we've got 1,666 left in this stage, so that's, uh, that's a lot. That'll get us all the way to EVE, certainly. So we didn't even need this transfer stage. But again, I couldn't use a smaller rocket simply because of the fairing size, so that's the downside to it. Okay, well, let's uh, plot for Eve and then make sure that we have that alarm in. And then we'll launch the next thing. Okay, I have it at an Eve periapsis of about 500 kilometers, but this does involve another. Whoa, whoa, too close, too close. Another moon flyby here. You can see, just as we had with the other mission, we have this sort of situation with the moon. So we'll have to be careful about that. That's in 17 minutes. So I'm just going to add this maneuver to the alarm clock. And, uh, yep. And that'll give us enough time to launch the next thing, I think. 16 minutes. Let's get to it quickly. Okay, so the next thing is the Gilly Water Fountain. And that is this. This is a little probe that is specially designed for Gilly, which means, of course, it doesn't have too much of a thrust weight ratio. It actually has a pretty decent thrust weight ratio, but uh, uh, not much delta V in order to get on and off Gilly because you don't need much delta V to get on and off Gilly. Uh, mainly, it is going to be filled with water, and you can see its delta V is even less once it's all full of it. But of course, we are not sending any water over there. And it will have liquid fuel oxidizer, but its special component is the fact that it can drill for carbonite. So, in other words, this probe can refuel itself and then drill for water. So that's something uh, sort of additional that we haven't seen before. And it's got this uh, special solar panels, circular concentrating photovoltaics on the side. And uh, of course, carbonite 
tanks, otherwise drilling for carbonite is not going to be very helpful. This is the carbonite converter, which will convert it to the liquid fuel and oxidizer. It is full of liquid fuel and oxidizer, of course. And otherwise, this is the transfer stage to EVE. And that just about says it all. Otherwise, its main engines are the Rock Max 2477s, just because I couldn't fit anything more efficient anywhere else. And so that's why I had to use. Its main mass is actually drilling units, which are very, very heavy. And of course, you can't just put one because they're radial. You have to put at least two, uh, unless you have like a truck or something. But that is not what we have here. Uh, so actually filling it up completely with water doesn't in it increases its mass by about 10 tons but its dr dry mass without the water is already 18 tons so not the most efficient thing but then again it's gotta be hopping around gilly so it doesn't have to be so that's the plus point it has docking port on its base and that's how things will grab the water and we are not going to be sending an oasis, in other words, something that's going to convert the water to liquid fuel and oxidizer just yet. We'll do that on the next pass with EVE because EVE transfers are fairly frequent. We'll just send this over and test it out first. That way we won't be caught short. And so that's like that. And the benefit though, I didn't want to turn the fairings like that. The benefit of that is that we might pick up a contract for Eve and Gilly that uh, we'll use to fund the Oasis mission because that's much more expensive than this. So yeah, that's why I'm holding off on that. We don't really have a Gilly contract for this. So yeah, lots of other contracts, but nothing for Gilly. Oh well, anyway, so uh, yep, yeah, that's going up on the Strider Light as well. And in this case, it's necessary. I think. So uh, we've got, we actually have the EVE transfer stage size to 50 tons, which is the capacity for this launcher. So it's completely up to capacity, and we'll see how it does. Oh, getting a little bit dark out. Good thing this is the last launch of the day. So, yep. SAS on, throttle up. Smart ASS ready. And uh, launch. So just in case it's not clear, the, the transfer stage, the EVE transfer stage, will also be responsible for getting this into orbit around Gilly. That's why it has so much delta V, just in case we have a lot of plane changes and all that. And again, I don't know whether I want to air brake at EVE because, you know, things might blow up. We do have daily re-entry after all. And so, oh, I need to uh, rotate much faster than I'm doing. So yeah. Uh, we'll see whether we can do a propulsive capture around EVE or whether that's necessary or not. Okay, looking good. We've got a much flatter trajectory this time, so hopefully we won't overdo it on the apoapsis. Still, Tino apoapsis is going up fairly steadily. We'll have a nice bit of time to get to orbit. And booster set. Oh, gotta check that out. Uh, okay, stage recovered. So from the EVE Science... Oh, we can't move this. Can we move this? No. Okay, EVE Science Drone. Yeah, we recovered that one. Landed at 4.3 meters per second. And we recovered that one. 27.72 kilometers away from the KSC. Same sort of idea. Okay, so recovery worked. And we proceed. Now, some have suggested recovering these stages, the core stages, and it's possible, but I don't want to cheat deadly re-entry at all, so I gotta do some testing, uh, and I mean recorded testing, stuff that you guys will see, uh, to demonstrate that these things really can return safely, uh, and that stage recovery is not doing something illegitimate, right? So, I want to make that clear before I do that, and I haven't uh, really assessed what I need to put in terms of parachutes and all that and then of course all the stages have to be rebuilt in terms of subassemblies so not something I'm working on right now not for this sequence of missions but that will be something down the line we'll just hold on to the fairings until I'm sure it's safe to dump them probably after the first cutout of the mainsail
Looks like this rocket could carry more than 50 tons to orbit, which is good. So far it's been sort of noteworthy how stable the Strider series of launchers is, and I hope it continues that way. I'll cut throttle here and separate the fairings. Yeah, um, I'm hoping that we don't get any wiggles, basically, because we're going to have at least one really tall payload on our largest launcher, and that's going to be nerve-wracking for me. So I hope that everything remains nice and stable the way it has been. We'll see about that. I think I'll have this stage re-enter, actually. 500 is a lot of Delta V. I don't know. Yeah, I think I'll just have this stage re-enter. Okay, let's uh, stage and proceed. Okay, solar panels out. Let's see, they're the circular concentrating ones. And uh, we're getting close. Oh, that's the curb in the Eve transfer point, uh, right on time. Okay, so those seem to be out. All right, obviously in the dark, so they're completely useless. But let's plot for this transfer to Eve, and then we can proceed with the other mission. Okay, I've got this one to uh, target periapsis of 500 kilometers for now as well, and the node is in 13 minutes, so I'm just going to add that into the queue. And it looks like we'll have enough time. So first, the EVE science drone. So let us uh, jump to ship. Alright, good thing I put a large reaction wheel high up over here. Where are you? There you are. Yep, otherwise this would be a pain to turn. Still having a little bit of trouble getting to that node, but it's a lot better than trying to turn this thing without that reaction wheel there. The probes themselves, of course, have those tiny... Uh, 0.625 meter reaction wheels, but that would not have been good. Okay, delete, close. Alright, uh, yep, yeah, I, I don't know. Let's do a quick test burn. No, that wasn't very good. This thing says it's 9 seconds. Not entirely inclined to disbelieve that. There's the moon, of course. We know that we're going to get a moon flyby as part of this. Okay, let's let's go. Oh, 43 seconds. That's a little bit more like it. That's got to be a little bit hard to fine tune this with the mainsail, and of course, trying to turn it. It's got to be really interesting to see if these things can fly in the atmosphere of Eve. That would be something. First time I would have flown an airplane in the atmosphere of Eve. Obviously, they don't need to breathe any oxygen because they're using the Rockmax 487S's. Okay, that was a little bit far. Let's not have it follow the node though. Let's see. Got that uh, moon flyby. Well, we have we have an uh, we have an Eve periapsis of 431 by the look of it. But let me get rid of the maneuver. No, that was that was actually the maneuver node. We've got an unknown approach to Eve. It's far off actually. Darn it. Hmm. Well, best to fix this after we pass the moon. At least we've got some sort of Eve encounter right now. So alright. I guess I'll just do an SOI change. So we'll add an alarm for this SOI change into the moon's territory and follow it there. Though uh, we might have a little bit of a complication going on here. But let's quickly jump to the Eve water fountain. Not, the Gilly water fountain, sorry. And see what we need to do with that. Okay, here we go. And I forgot to mention, of course, we do have the detector on top. So, And I believe that's good enough to detect both carbonite and water. So we are all set on that department as well. Did not forget that. And as with the other mission, I think we'll just wait till the alarm. But I think we gotta start this off a little bit sooner. Okay, delete on close, close alarm. Alright, let's see how this does. 
All right, that's that's about right, I think. Okay, here it goes. Pretty hefty lander for Gilly. Should be interesting. First attempt to combine carbonite drilling and water drilling. Of course, we're using the mini carbonite drills from the Carbonite Plus, I think. You might wonder why we don't just drill for carbonite instead of water. But of course, water can be used as a life support uh, resource as well as a fuel resource and uh, we do have a procedural light support tank here actually that's how I'm planning to contain the water and of course water is part of the whole produ production chain that we will later want to set up and Gilly will be a very interesting place to put some of that so yeah getting operations started around Gilly might be helpful getting training we need to train our Kerbals too that's something I need to get on with uh, getting a training academy launched. We'll see where to put that though. I It could be Minmus, it could be something like Gilly, it could be sending it over to Jewel where there's a lot of biomes to work with. Not on this transfer though, I don't think. Maybe it'll be a mobile training academy. That's possible. Well, it turns out that this uh, this launch is not going to be as accurate as I would have liked. We're quite a bit off, as you can see. Our we're almost three minutes past the node. Yeah, this was a lot slower than I thought it would be. Don't know how this is gonna turn out. The other ones turned out pretty well. Well, here goes the moon encounter. Well, not not actually the one that we're uh, sort of aiming for over here. It's a different moon encounter. And we're not hitting at the right location. I wanted to hit at the ascending node. Yeah. We're going to have to do something to fix this. Let's see if something... We're, no, we're not even hitting the moon, are we? Yeah, we're so far off we didn't get that moon encounter that we were supposed to be hitting. Okay, so let's say I fix this in a minute. Well, I guess that'll have to suffice, and then we'll uh, adjust it later on. It won't be at the ascending node, so we can't get as close to it as I would otherwise. Probably need an inclination adjustment besides that. Well, maybe we can do the inclination adjustment here, but it is close to curve. It maybe be better to do it a little bit further around, uh, as I think we're doing with the Eve Lander 2 there. Okay, let's just quickly do this burn, and then we'll aim for an inclination adjustment further away from Kerbin. Is this actually helping at all? I don't really see it doing anything useful. Maybe the moon's complicating things. Let's say around here I fix some inclination. Okay, I've got to 1,700 kilometers, so uh, I guess I'll do this. It costs another 146 meters per second, which sucks, but... Well, let's just add this to the queue. Looks like it occurs after the EU Science Drone gets its check, so let's go for that. Okay, so I'm plotting an adjustment for the EU Science Drone's in in Moonar Sphere of Influence. So we'll get into the Moon Sphere of Influence and adjust things. But you can see where the locations that they have to scan are. So we, we need a fair bit of inclination to get to those places. We don't immediately need that inclination. Obviously uh, getting, aiming right for them right now will be useless because E will rotate. So um, we need to go this way I think. And then any little prograde change has a big effect. Doesn't look like this is gonna cost too much in Mooner SOI. Gotta still keep the periapsis a little bit loose. So uh, 5.2 meters per second. And let's just add that node as well. So we'll cross SOI, it'll slow us down safely, and then we will proceed to the maneuver node. Okay, so here we are for our maneuver, and just for sanity's sake, I'm going to thrust limit the mainsail. 
all the way down to 10%. That'll probably be a good idea. Let's see what it's done. Oh, we still focused on Eve. Looks like we're too low now. And oh no, that brings us higher. Okay, let's continue burning like this. Okay, I thought that would I thought burning more in this direction would bring us lower, but it brings us higher. So that's good. That looks like an excellent approach. Okay, um 10 minutes to the Okay, let's focus back here. 10 minutes to the Gilly water fountain. I'll I'll add an alarm for our SOI change here. This is such a good approach to Eve, I don't want to mess it up. So we'll add that alarm there. And now to the Gilly Water Fountain for its adjustment. Now we're making this adjustment prior to Moon SOI. I'm wondering maybe maybe we should kill this and see if doing it inside Moon or SOI will be better or cost less. So uh, 146.4 here let me uh, let me jot down the exact numbers prograde normal and radial and then let me plot uh, alternative in moon SOI and see how that works out okay I've probably plotted a bit more than I should have I actually plotted for orbit manual orbit no air braking at Eve just to see how it work out I did so because I also wanted to know how I could minimize my my inclination with respect to Gilly right we're trying to get this Gilly water fountain to Gilly and so I've, I've got it to 9 degrees, which is as little as I can get. But at least we do have a tangency at that point. So maybe we can hit Gilly close to that. Uh, we'll have to adjust it. But um, this requires only 112 meters per second over here around the moon in Moon or SOI. And then the burn for orbit here at EVE is 367, which is well within our means. Uh, so I think this is going to be the idea. I don't know exactly how much it'll take to adjust our orbit to match Gilly. That could be a bit tricky, but uh, Gilly has a very slow orbit, so hopefully it won't be too bad. And because uh, this end is not so close to Eve, it'll probably be easier. Anyway, that's what I'm thinking. But uh, it'd be better if uh, our tangency was right at the apoapsis, that'd be nicer. But, I don't know. Let's just do this Mooner one first, and then we'll see how we get into orbit later on. Okay, here we go. Curb alarm clock slowing us down. Delete that. And we're a little bit dark because Kerbin is covering up the sun. Trying to get this as close as possible, but that's not guaranteed. I'm going to get the approach to Eve that I actually plotted. Let's see. Uh, okay, well, it's not bad. It's about right. 2,000 kilometers away from Eve itself, but that's by plan. Yeah, we'll plot the rest once we get there. I think that'll be alright. Okay, so uh, we'll just add whatever the next alarm is. Probably SOI change into solar sort of influence. Okay, so uh, this Gilly water fountain is a little bit unclear about whether it's actually escaped the moon or not. You can see moon escape plus 30 minutes here, but I set the alarm for when it was supposed to escape, so I don't know. Uh, let's just add a curb and escape. Oh, oh no future SOI points found. Mm. Now we've got the EVE Lander 2's maneuver in 1 minute and 26 seconds, so I don't want to spend too much time time warping here, but I think I have to. There we go. Alright, now now we have the SOI change into solar orbit, so we'll have that. And let's jump to EVE Lander 2. Okay, so I've just adjusted the node for EVE Lander 2 a little bit, and we should be burning soon. It's only at 34.5 meter per second burn though and we've got a minute to handle it and so it'll be going uh, prograde around around Eve and I guess we'll be air breaking this one it's got a heat shield and everything so uh, I've set the periapsis to 183 right now just because uh, you know precision is not great so yeah 
We'll do the burn and we'll see what we set the periapsis at after that. At least it's very maneuverable, it's a very lightweight thing. You can see the heat shield here, hopefully it'll work out. It's got 400 units of ablator shielding there. Okay, uh, let's just do a slow burn here. Okay. Well, this is a very different path than the other one. Seems like the complete opposite sort of inclination. But it is also prograde, it's just a 90 degree difference. Weird. Okay, well... That should be alright. We, we'll want to get into orbit first, so I'll have to use air braking calculator to get the right number. Okay, um, E-Science drone is going to have an SOI change soon. This is going to have SOI change into solar orbit next, apparently. So we actually had the plot past the moon. Okay, so let's just pay attention to Eve Science Drone. So let's get this moving. And so I'll conclude the episode by checking that everything is on its way to Eve safely and with a suitable approach to Eve. And once we've determined that, I'll uh, conclude the episode because next episode will handle all of the jewel stuff, which is actually a lot more than this, uh, with four launches and all. So that's it's going to be a little bit more serious, probably take a lot more time. And there might be some of this stuff mixed in with it, depending on what we get done and what we don't. Okay, but I'm, very, I'm being very careful about everything. So I'm crossing SOIs gingerly and making alarms for them. Let's make sure... Gilly Water Fountain's alright. Okay, here we go. The alarm has been reached. And so we're one minute away from crossing into interplanetary space. Is that it? Looks like it. And our periapsis there for this uh, is appropriate. 2,000 kilometers. Because we're going to be transferring over to Gilly. So let's add that alarm. So that's SOI change into EVE. Next, the EVE lander. Okay, alarm has been reached. And now with the EVE lander, we will see this get into interplanetary space as well. Okay, and what's its EVE periapsis now? 68.9 or so. Alright, that is good enough. And we'll add that alarm. Looks like this comes before the Gilly water fountain. And then finally, the science drones that have to get those barometer readings. Okay. SOI change time. And E periapsis is 368.9, which I suppose will be good enough. Okay. Yep. And so there we have it. All of our missions to EVE are on their way, so three missions to EVE. So if you're keeping count, we've got four missions to Drez, three missions to EVE. I'll add the alarm for this one before I forget. And so the lander will be coming in first, but that's only four hours ahead of these drones. And then that's two days ahead of the water fountain to Gilly. And then, but anyway, that's all after we make the launches to Jewel and we bring the Explorer X on its way back and then deal with this asteroid okay and that is uh, what kind of asteroid is, is that the D class that might be the that may that might be the one that we need to eject into interstellar space so that's going to be interesting okay so lots to do and so you know what we're doing next time we're doing some jewel launches four of them I don't know if I'll be able to fit everything into one episode, but we'll see how many explosions there are, basically, is how that works. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.